The purpose of this video is to give you some suggestions for how to work with large data sets. We'll cover how to work on a copy of the data, how to clean up the data files, and how to sort the data so that it's easier to process. Then we'll talk about two strategies for looking at the data, a graphical approach, and then some descriptive statistics. Here's a data set generated by the Fall 2011 Ecology and Evolution class. Their exact question isn't important to know. What you should notice is that there were two treatments, HS and control, and a Y variable, proportion germinated. The first step to working with the data is to copy the raw data onto a new page in the workbook so that you only ever work on a copy of the data. The way to do this is to insert a new worksheet and give it a name. Um, and I often call it working, oops, working data. And then to go to the raw data, put the cursor up to the top left hand side, see it change to a black arrow, click, and then do a copy, and put the cursor into the first cell on my destination worksheet, and then I'm going to do a paste values. That way, I'm sure that the numbers get transmitted as values and not as uh, text or something else. The second step is to inspect the data. I'm going to scroll down the data and look for empty cells, cells with values and text both in them, and some typos in the text. And when I do this, I notice that my proportion germinated for this particular um, row in my data table, and hold on, let me, let me highlight it here for you, shows a proportion of 1.2. Now I know that you can't have a proportion greater than 1.0, so there's something wrong with this data. It looks funny. I go back to my original lab notebook, and I find out that this data point was really 1.0. The 1.2 was a typo. In this case, because I know from my lab notebook or my field notebook that this is a typo, I can change it. If I didn't have that information from the lab or field notebook, I'd have to keep it in. Um, the other way that data can sometimes be erroneous is if a mistake has been made. And so maybe in my 1.2, instead of realizing that it's 1.0 and that the 1.2 entry was a typo, I find that there was some reason that there was an error in this. I see a notation that I really had 20 seeds in my sample instead of dividing by the 10, and that gives me the 1.2. Um, in that case, I can then also, if it's a mistake, either delete it or change the right value. I'd have to delete it in that case because I don't know what the true proportion germinated is. Um, if I find out that it is not a typo and there doesn't seem to be a mistake about the data, I, there are statistical ways to find out if, there, if a particular type of data is an outlier. We won't go into that in this class, but if you take Biology 211, you'll find out about those. Generally, most of the data cleanup will be done for you in this course, but you should be aware that it happens. Now that I've got my correction made, I can take, I'm going to get rid of that highlighting just because it's a little confusing. Um, I do want to do a couple of other things just to make my life a little easier. For one thing, I like to look at data when it's centered in the column. I find it easier for me to read it that way, so I've just highlighted the columns and uh, centered the text. Um, I find that I like to have my um, title up here uh, complete, so if I put my cursor up here on the line between uh, columns C and D, and double click on it, that expands the column so that I now uh, can see my entire um, text up here. That just helps me clean things up. The third thing that I'm going to do, especially because this is a fairly large data set, is I'm going to sort the data. It would be a lot easier to work with the data if I had all of my HS treatments together in one place and all of my control treatments together in one place. This can be easily done in Excel using the sort function. So I'm going to highlight the data, including my header row. Make sure that that's done. Scroll down. 
and I'm going to go up to my sort menu. Now, in this particular version of Excel, sort is, up, is under the data tab. Other versions of Excel, it's in different places. Your version of Excel, it may look different depending on which flavor you've got. I'm going to pull down sort, and I can actually sort on more than one criteria. So the first criteria I'm going to sort on here is, I pull this down, I'm going to sort by treatment, so that I've got all my uh, rows that belong to the HS treatment in one place, and all the rows from the control treatment in another place. And then I want to sort also by the value of my Y variable, the uh, proportion germinated. So I'm going to sort on that. And why I want to do that will become clear in a minute. All right, I've got my sort criteria in here. I hit OK. And voila, my data is sorted. So I've got all my control treatments here. And if I scroll down, I've got all my HS treatments here. I want to know when I'm looking at the data file when I'm transitioning from one treatment group to another. So I'm going to put a line underneath where that split happens. I just highlight the row, go up to the uh, add borders, and just put a line there. So now I've got a visual marker for when I change treatments within my data file. You can also do it with color. So I could just highlight all my control variables, go up here to the top, and again use my fill and just use a light color. That means anything that is green, I know is control. And that's a way just for me to, to really keep um, track of things. Once I have my data cleaned up, I'm ready to actually do something with it. And the first thing I want to do with it is to do some basic descriptions, some summary statistics. And the one of the most powerful ways to do that is to construct something called a frequency histogram. A frequency histogram is a graph that has the dependent variable on the x-axis, that's the opposite of its usual place, and the number of observations on the y-axis. And it's a great way to show the data as it allows you to see each particular value and how common that value is. When the data have a fairly large range, you usually lump the values so that the number of categories is between 10 and 20. An Excel can be used to graph a histogram once the number of observations for each category has been counted. Um, and I'll, let me show you how this works now. Now, this particular data set, I don't have a huge range of variables, so I'm just going to go and use fewer than 10 uh, uh, categories. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oops, here I am. I want to be this one. I'm going to use these categories um, zero, zero, less than 0 0.7, 0 0.71 to 0 0.8, 0 0.81 to 0 0.9, and 0 0.91 to 1.0. So I'm going to just, uh, for speed's sake, copy this and paste it into my working data file. It's a little bit like cooking here. I've kind of done some of the stuff ahead of time. Again, I want to do a paste values so that I've got these numbers. So I've already done this for the control data set. There are three um, groups here, 11, group, 11 variables here. Um, I could just go through and count things, but I, there's an easy way to get Excel to do it. And let me show you how to do this. Um, Excel has a count function. So what I'm going to do is type equal sign, count, open up a parentheses, and then I'm going to scroll down to where I have my HS data set, and I'm going to highlight the cells that have the proportion as 0.7 and less. I'm going to close my parentheses, and there it is. I've got 16 values that fit that criteria, less than or equal to 0.7. I can do the same thing for the next criteria, count. Now I'm interested in 0.71 to 0.8. Again, I scroll down to my data, 0 0.71 to 0 0.8, close the parentheses, hit enter, uh, 0 0.81 to 0 0.9, here we are, close the parentheses, 
and the final one count oops yep I got my parentheses there 0 0.91 to 1.0 so there I can very easily do this counting to get the um, data for a frequency histogram to actually make the frequency histogram I'm just going to select my data I'm going to go up to the insert menu and insert a chart again how you get there might be a little bit different I want to do a clustered column chart and there's my clustered column chart <coughs> um, this is not a an acceptable chart for a uh, paper um, you would need to add a y-axis label an x-axis label um, get rid of these lines I'm not going to take the time to do it here that's very easily done in Excel however and this gives me a frequency histogram frequency histograms are a very powerful way to look at the data but they're not often published um, and that's because there's actually an easier way to describe the data and that way is to there's my frequency histogram with my labels and that is to do some summary statistics and the one that you're most com familiar with is the average or mean um, which is symbolized with X uh, with a line over top of it so it's pronounced as X bar so if you ever hear um, or read X bar equal to you know what they're talking about is the mean or the average the other um, important things in terms of summary statistics you need to describe the variation and there are actually three ways to describe the variation um, variance standard deviation and standard error of the mean variance represents the squared difference between each data point and the mean if this is a small number then most of the values are going to cluster around the mean if it is a large number the values for y are quite variable variance is not commonly reported as the units are squared but it's used in calculating other statistics so it's good to calculate it Excel can do this quite easily standard deviation is another way to um, express uh, the variation in the data or the variation in the sample in particular and it is the square root of the variance Excel will also calculate this easily um, but it is actually not often reported either what is most commonly reported is something known as the standard error of the mean and this may be something that you are not very familiar with the reason the standard error of the mean is used most often is it summarizes the precision about the mean for example suppose you repeat an experiment 10 times and calculate 10 means for your variable the standard error measures the variability in those estimates of the mean as with other measures the smaller the value of the standard error indicates that the data are more precise that means they're less variable than large values are Excel will not calculate this for you in a single function however it's not hard to get Excel to do this using two functions and let me show you quickly how to do that so going back to my Excel data sheet working with my data file I'm going to um, enter here a column for control and a column for my HS treatment and I want the mean the variance the standard deviation oops, the sample size which is the number of replicates and then the standard error of the mean <clears throat> make this a little bigger all right the syntax for calculating the mean is quite straightforward it's equals average and then you just highlight the cells you want the average of I want the average for all of the control data so I'm going to just highlight those cells here's where my um, color coding works because I just have to I know I just have to do everything in green close the brackets hit enter and there's my average variance is equal VAR highlight the same set of data because I want the variance for everything in the control group and there's the variance standard deviation equals STDEV highlight these data
sample size. We already know that we can get Excel to count things. So all you do count. And then I'm ready to do standard error. Um, let me just say as I've done this, I don't actually have to highlight. I could just type the cell identity. So if I click in my cell here for uh, the average, you can see the syntax up here in the formula bar equals tells Excel to do a calculation, average what for it to calculate. And then what I want it to do is calculate the values between C4 and C74. I could just type those in. I don't have to do highlight. All right. <clears throat> The formula for standard error is very straightforward. If I go back to my um, PowerPoint here, the standard error is the standard deviation of the data, which we've calculated, which is S, divided by the square root of the sample size. And we have the sample size, so we just have to calculate its square root. To do that, I'm going to go back to my Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to type equal. I want Excel to take the standard deviation, which I've placed in that cell, and divide it by the square root, which is SQRT, or squirt, divide of the sample size. And there's my standard error of the mean. I can calculate the same things for my honeysuckle group, and then I have all of this information to plug into a formula to calculate t-tests or other statistical tests or to do construct a bar graph for a report. And we'll have other um, videos that talk about that process. Um, I should say one thing about uh, significant figures. The general rule that we will use is that you go to one more decibel place than your measuring pre uh, accuracy. So here we've calculated proportion, germ proportion germinated to, to two decimal places. So once I have all of my calculations done, I would actually report these to three decimal places. So if I format my cells, go to number, make that a three, Excel will then round up to um, the third decimal place. Excel still remembers all of these decimal places. In fact, it remembers probably 100 decimal places for the calculation, but that's um, all it will show me. So this is how to um, do some basic statistics in um, Excel for ecology and evolution. Um, we do have other videos on how to do t-tests and how to do graphs, and those could also be viewed. Bye-bye.